Good evening, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome to another session of our Pray for the World, which we do every Monday evening, South African time, 9 p.m. Uh, I'm Pastor Diane van Straten, co-founder of Pray for the World, all the way from Cape Town, South Africa, and it is our winter. Uh, there's 136 nations that have signed up for Pray for the World. Isn't that amazing that to know that while we are here gathered together, there's 136 nations around the world gathering at this moment together around the Word of God, around prayer, and we, the Word of God says we, we are gathered in His name. He is in our midst. What a privilege and an honor to know that God promised, but that it, He doesn't just promise, but He delivers. Hallelujah. He's a faithful, a mighty God. Even when we are unfaithful, He stays faithful. Even if we, if we do not understand or if we don't want to, God still is faithful. Hallelujah. When I ask the word, uh, the Holy Spirit, what do you say on this pray for the world? This scripture came up in my spirit. Uh, the one in Luke where God say, uh, where Jesus say, I say to you. And he was talking about when we ask, we seek and we knock. And um, where the Holy Spirit wanted to go with this message this time is because we always read the scripture that Jesus says in Luke uh, 11, 9 to 10. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking and it shall be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you shall find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door shall be open to you for everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives. And he who seeks and keeps on seeking will find. And to him who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door shall be opened. Hallelujah. That is God's word. But where I want to stand still is the very first words of this verse, verse 9. He says, so I say to you, and that was Jesus speaking in Luke. He says, so I say to you. And all the weight of heaven is behind that. I say to you, Jesus says, I say to you. So I say to you. Um, the word of God says it's impossible to, to, to please God without faith. Because we that go to him must know that he is. And that he is a rewarder. Of those who diligently seek him. That's our Hebrews 11, 6 scripture. We have to not only believe that he is there when we pray and ask and knock and seek, but that he is a rewarder. Now, Jesus came to this earth and he came and he came to show us who the father is. The Father, He came to show us the love of the Father. Because remember, until now, we, before Jesus came, until the moment that He came, they had the, the, the five books of Moses, they had the law. Um, although they said to Jesus, and if we read the book of John, we'll see that uh, the confrontation with, with, with the Jews and with Jesus they said, no, but we've got Abram as our father. We've got one father, and that is God. And Jesus kept on saying to them, but if you, if, if God was your father, you would do the works that I do, and you will honor me. But you dishonor me. You do the works of your father. And he tells them at one stage, you've got Satan as your father. So Jesus literally had to come in the law as a Jew because he had to come and show them the truth. Abram understood this truth. Because when he was interceding, and we see that right through the Old Testament, the prophets, uh, the men of God, the women of God that knew the Father, knew how to speak to him, knew uh, to ask him grace and mercy. Because they know the heart of a father that's got grace and mercy. And Jesus came to this earth and he said to us, I say to you, 
I say to you, he says to them in John, he says, I come, he says to, 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 to Thomas, was it, or Philip, when he said, he said, uh, just show us the Father. He says, but I've been so long with you and you do not even recognize the Father. Jesus came to reveal the Father to us, to show us he's a Father of love. He came to show us he wanted us to know the Father the way he knows the Father. So when he says, I say to you, ask, he knows that his Father hears him. Because he, when he prays in the temple, in the book of John, he says, Father, I pray because of the ones around me, I know that you always hear me. Jesus said that, I know that you always hear me. That is the nature of the Father, that he, who is the Father. Okay, and I want to just dwell a little bit on, so I say to you, ask, you shall receive, seek, you will find, knock, and the door will be opened. Um, the word of God says in James, and, and before we go into the Father, uh, where I want to go to, head to at the moment, and that is, I want to read to us in James what the word of God says. It's all God's word, His glorious word. Um, James, the word of God says, You are jealous. And covet what others have, and your desires go unfulfilled. Unfulfilled. So you became murderers. To hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. Now this is the uh, James four verse two and three in the New King James. Um, to hate is to murder as far as your heart. Uh, your hearts are concerned, sorry, it's the Amplified. You burn with envy and anger and are not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment and the happiness that you seek. So you fight and war. Now we know here God is not talking about you grab a gun and you start shooting, but God says to hate in your hearts is as good as murder. To hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. So we do not have, we are jealous, this lust, um, fight amongst each other. And he says, you do not have because you do not ask. You do not have because you do not ask. Now, a lot of people ask his prayer, is pray. People don't ask the Lord for things. They just think God must know it and God must do it. But God the Father wants you and me to acknowledge Him, to ask Him. Verse 3 says, Or you do ask God for them and yet fail to receive them because you ask with wrong purpose and evil, selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it in sensual pleasures. The King James says, uh, the New King James, because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. You see, um, God is a God of love and his love means he's a jealous God. And he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness to be in the right standing with him. Seek everything in him, in Jesus and everything else shall be added to you because then you will not sin with it because you will have the righteousness of God and that is Jesus when we have his nature and he bless us we will not go and sin with the blessings look what the Israelites did they got the blessings God took them 450 years that took God to get them out of Egypt because of the hearts we did this message as well before because of their hearts. So God took them to the desert and revealed their hearts to themselves, to them. And what did they do with the blessings that they took out of Egypt? They started serving, making idols. So they did not, because they did not have God's nature. They started and make idols and serve Satan. Now, Jesus said, I say to you, now Jesus is our teacher. He's the one sent from God. The Father sent him. Jesus, my teacher, my Lord, my God. He cannot be wrong. He cannot lie. If he say, I say to you, that is your logic. That is my logic. If God, if Jesus say, 
I say to you. Because behind that I say to you, he's got the Father's authority, uh, power, uh, um, the whole of the host of heaven, the Holy Spirit. He's got everything. He's got the whole of heaven behind him when he say, I say to you. The Father gave him the right, the authority. He put his seal of approval on his son. So when Jesus say, I say to you, that is your logic, child of God and mine. If Jesus says it, he cannot lie. His word is yes and amen. If Jesus say to you, he speaks, he is the end of all debate. So when Jesus speaks, you don't have to argue about it. You don't have to make a big discussion about it. When Jesus said it, that's it. You believe him, it settles it all. Hallelujah. John 1 verse 3, he made all things. This is the word, this is Jesus. He made all things. And all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. All things were made and came into existence through him. That's amplified. And without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. The word of God, the precious Jesus, nothing, nothing, hallelujah, everything was made, came into being through the word of God. He was in the beginning. The word was with God and the word was God. The word is God with all his authority, with all his power, with everything, hallelujah. He sustains all things. Jesus knows the heart and the decrees of the Father. The Father loves us. Jesus loves us. God is love. Jesus knew the heart of the Father. And He came. He gives us His Word. And He gives us the the instructions, the manual. And He says, this is what happens in your old nature. When you receive blessings in your old nature, you're going to sin with it. And the Father doesn't want that. Um, He came into the temple in the beginning of the book of John and he he saw they were selling and, uh, uh, and trading and doing things in the temple. The money exchangers and all of those things. If you read John in the beginning of the book of John and Jesus was upset and he said, you, my, my father's house, you made a house of robbers and thieves. He said, but my father's house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. So he comes to show us what his father is like, who his father is, what his father required. Because remember, again, I want to say, until that moment, they did these things in the temples and Jesus came and he threw over the tables and he said to them, what are you doing? My father's house should be a house of prayer. Although they had the law, although they had the five books of Moses, yet they did not please the Father because there was no faith in the Father. There was no love for the Father in their hearts. Jesus said that to them. There was no love for the Father. And to them, the Father was judgmental. The moment somebody sinned, and we see that right through the Gospels, that the woman that that they caught in sin, they threw her at the feet of Jesus, and they were condemning. And they wanted him to stone her. So they had the law, but they didn't have the spirit word. They didn't have the life of the father in that word to show grace and mercy. You see, the law came through Moses, but grace and mercy, the truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he came to reveal the father to you and to me. Hallelujah. There's no conflict in the Godhead. Jesus will not do anything against the Father. And then when he went, he said, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit from the Father. I'm going to ask the Father and the Father is going to give the Holy Spirit. And not only did the Father gave Jesus, his only son, to be to die, to be crucified for you and for me. Now that he, that Jesus is sitting on his right hand, that he went back to the Father, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. We are not orphans. The moment you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are in a glorious, wonderful family with a glorious Father, with a huge Father full of love and compassion and that hears and that answers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God Almighty. So he gave, he gave Jesus, then he gave the Holy Spirit. And we're not orphans. Jesus said the Father. So he shows us whatever he asks the Father, the Father hears, the Father answers, and the Father wants to help. 
and we not orphans. He came to reveal the heart of the Father. The Father o- opened heaven by giving Jesus Christ, by giving himself. He reconciled us with him. The love of the Father, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, the Father loves you and he loves me. And he wants to have a relationship with us. And he sent his son, and not only did he send his son, but now he sent his spirit, his very life. And they are a glorious family. If you can embrace the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as a family, as your godly family, you are safe and secure and protected and you are never alone. I didn't grow up with a father, an earthly father. But I can tell you, the heavenly father revealed himself to me in such a mighty and a glorious way as his child, as his daughter. And he heard me and answered me many, many a time on my own before I got married. Just as I got saved, he answered me as my father that looked after me, that protected me, that provided for me. There's so many testimonies in my life where the Father came through for me. Not only did He deliver me and touch me and poured His love in my heart, He forgave me, but then also provided for me and protected me. There was a stage when five guys wanted to rape me and I just called on Him and He kept me. The Father was concerned, loved me. But the Word of God says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, they do not reap. But your heavenly Father watches over them. Not one of them falls down. It's in Matthew 6 and Matthew 10 where he talks about the sparrows and the birds. And he says not one of them falls to the ground without your heavenly Father knows. He says and all the hair on your head, the hairs on your head is numbered. That's how much he is aware and know you and me. He knows us. The father. And even in the ministry with my late husband, there was times that we really needed finances. And I said, God, but you got to do it because we standing in your, in the service of you. And he spoke to me and he said to me, and you do not deserve anything. I don't have to do anything. I want to do it because I'm your heavenly father and I love you. You see, we do not deserve God or Jesus and forgiveness because we are wicked and we are full of hatred and murders. We just read in the word, people, either they don't pray or they pray and they ask God so that they can sin with whatever the Father gives. God knows us. But he said to me, Diane, I do it because I'm a good father. I want to do this for you. And we're going to read those scriptures. We're going to read it. I just want to get through my words or statements that the Lord gave me. Fear prevents us or hampers us in prayer. It derails our prayer, fear. And if you do not trust the Lord, if you do not have faith in Him and in His love and understand that Jesus came from the Father and He taught us the love of the Father, if we do not understand that, we walk in fear. Fear derails our prayers. And Jesus, even Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, he understood how dependent upon the Father he was, how he needed the Father. And he he knew he had a relationship with the Father because he came from the Father. They were one. They are one. And he was he was teaching and showing that to us. Precious child of God, I want to encourage you to never stop praying, never stop speaking to the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Jesus prayed and teach us to pray because our Heavenly Father hears us. He wants to hear hear us. He wants to be your Father. He wants to be our Father. He wants to answer He wants to save us. That is who the Father is. And that's what Jesus came to show us. We read right through the word. We will see that is the heart of the Father. Even with Moses, with Abraham, when they interceded, God said, if there's then two people, three people, five people, 50, 30, I will save this nation. The 
the heart of the Father is not to, to destroy us. The world, even in this time, that's why God called pray for Esai so many years ago and then out of that was birth pray for the world. Because God doesn't want anybody to perish, but he wants them to come to salvation, to the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to save us. So time and again, God said to us this year, push back for pray for the world. God gave us pushback because God wants to push back the works of the enemy to save precious souls. It's not for you and I to go out there and, and, and brag about it. No, it's in our prayer closet in the secret place with our Heavenly Father. And our Father which who here in secret will reward us openly. But our Father, our secret place is where we communicate with Him and where we ask, Oh God, there's all these terrible things going on on the planet and we ask you to push it back. We ask you for another chance to please to save souls. Give us a gap to please save souls. I am in prayer with you and pleading with you, talking to you like Jesus did. Like Jesus taught us. Like the prophets taught us in the Word of God. And we've seen that even this past week, that, that praise God, that they can't just go and kill babies in the USA anymore. In South Africa, we got rid of the COVID, um, uh, the regulations and the masks. So there is, there is things that we don't even talk about. That's major pushbacks, but it's not there for us to go back to our old wicked ways. God doesn't give us the blessings to go and sin with the blessings. He doesn't answer your prayer and my prayer so that we can go back and sin with that again. Don't go back to normal. And I'm crying this out for anybody around the world where the, where, where the, where the, 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 the virus is not a, a threat anymore. Don't go back to your old ways, the sinful ways, but stay with God. Grab, take this opportunity to reach souls, to pray for them. Take this opportunity to spend time with the Father and then go out as the Father shows you to go and speak to people and go and pray for them. Hallelujah. The Father, Jesus came to show us the Father wants to open doors for us, to us. But he asked us to knock. He says, I say to you, and when he left, he says, you ask nothing until now. Now you're going to ask the Father in my name, and I will give you. He says, God wants to open doors for us. He wants, to he wants us to acknowledge him. He wants us to understand the Father wants to be needed. He wants to be a father. He wants his children to ask him, to be dependent on him, to provide for them, to protect them. Hallelujah. It makes him happy when we need him. Because he is the God that can do all things. He is the God that does the impossible. He wants to do the impossible. That's what Jesus came to show us and draw us to the Father. If the Father then sent Jesus because we were in need of a Savior, in desperate need of salvation, without us even realizing it or even asking us, without even us, uh, us asking us, the Father already sent the help and the answer we needed without because He knew what we're going to need. And He sent His Son. How much more, if He did that without asking, how much more will He not, when you and I acknowledge Him, how much more will He not answer when we ask Him? Hallelujah. And Jesus came and He gave us that insurance, uh, assurance that the Father will answer. And the Father also, as I said, gave us the Holy Spirit. He did not leave us on our own. The Father has our best interest at heart as His children. He wants us to ask Him, consult Him, ask His advice and directions. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. And that is in John 14, 13. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In John 14, we see Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Hallelujah. 
Jesus said in John 16, 24, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Why? Because then you will know that he hears you. That he's real. He has a relationship with you and he wants to help you. True joy only comes from a relationship with the Father through the Lord Jesus. 1 John 5 verse 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. Confidence in compa- and compassion in prayer. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have it. We have the petitions that we have asked of him. Second Peter two, uh, Second Peter three, verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, even until this very day. If I look at my own life and I look at people around and we look at the world and where we are at the moment, God is long suffering towards us. His grace and mercy. If you can just understand and see the tremendous grace and mercy God has for this planet. We see all these things going on and still God wants to save people. Still God gives us chance to pray and to preach to people. The Lord does not delay and is not tardy or slow about what he promises according to some people's conception of slowness slowness but he is long suffering extraordinary patient towards you not desiring that any should perish but that all should turn to repentance he is patient he is long suffering hallelujah the word of the lord said in psalm 65 to O oh, you who hear prayer to you all flesh will come That is his nature and that's what Jesus came to tell us when he said, Assuredly, I say to you, the whole weight, the authority, the Father, the Spirit, the power, the dunamis power, the dynamite power, heaven, the angels is behind those words. I say to you, surely I say to you, Jesus say, whatever you will ask, you will receive. If you knock, it will be opened. If you seek, you will find. Hallelujah. That's the word of our Lord and Savior. The word of God says in Isaiah 43, 25, he says, remind God of his promises. The Father wants you and me to remind him of the promises in his glorious word. God wants to know that we know about his promises. Our feelings may come and go. But God's love doesn't. God wants us to know about his promises. Knows what his promises is. He wants you to know that there's promises in the word for you and for me. He wants us to know that. The word of God says in in Luke 11, we read about the ask, the seek and the knock. And the same scripture we read in Matthew 7. And I want to read it to us in Matthew 7, verse 7 to 12. Jesus said, again, yeah, keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone keeps on asking, receives, and he who keeps on seeking, finds. And to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be opened. Or what man is there of you, if his son asks him for a loaf of bread, will hand him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will hand him a serpent? If then, evil as you are, Jesus says that, even if you, evil as you are, the King James says, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts, How, if you then, evil as you are, know how to give good and adventurous gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give good gifts to those who keep on asking him? 
So then whatever you desire that others would do to you and for you, even so do also to and for them. For this is sums up the law of the prophets. This sums up the name of God and that is love. He says, ask, all these things will be uh, given to you. He says, if you're evil and then you look after your children, how much more not your good heavenly father will watch over you. But then he says, but I want you then as my children to whatever you desire, others must do and want from them. Then be that person to do the same forth for them. That is the requirement of our Heavenly Father. Jesus introduced us to the Father. Hallelujah. The Word of God says in Psalm 63, it's such a beautiful psalm which I am going to read here at the end. I just want to remind you again that the, Jesus wants to introduce us to the Father. He wants us to meet the Father, see the Father, how He sees and knows the Father. What a wonderful, loving Father He is. He came to show us His relationship with the Father. He also came to show us how to serve the Father, how to how our attitude towards the Father, how to perform as a child or how to act or then what is expected of us as children. Jesus came and He is that that example for us so that we can reconcile with the Father, that He came to show us what pleases the Father. I want to end up with this Psalm 63 before we go to over to prayer. Psalm 63, it's such a beautiful psalm, a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land where no water is. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. So will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My whole being shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you, this is so beautiful. When you have this relationship with the Father, this is your heart, this is your song, this is your word, this is your everything. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my help and in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My whole being follows hard after you and clings closely to you, your right and uphold, your right hand uphold me. The King James says it this way, my soul follows close behind you, your right hand upholds me. And so we will rejoice in our God to know this is who, we, who, he, who he is. God is, he said, I am. And when he said, I am, he means he is everything that you will ever need, that you will ever long after. He is that person. He is that one. He is that when you're thirsty, he is the water. When you're hungry, he is the food. When you're lonely, he is your partner. When you're sick, he is your healer. He is your protection when you need it, O oh child of God. And in this night, hallelujah, as we are together in the name of our Lord and Savior, and we come to the Father, the Father that Jesus came to show us, this loving, gracious, glorious, wonderful, hallelujah, your father in heaven that did not leave us on this earth alone he did not sit in heaven with jesus and the holy spirit and they were cozy and happy and safe and thought oh well ooh, now adam and eve made a mistake and now the 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 uh, the, the souls are perishing they're dying it's gone it's over with him i lost him he didn't think like that and say, oh, well, I'm cutting off of human, of the human race. I'm cutting off this planet, this planet that is so rebellious because this is really a rebellious planet that's a filthy dustbin. This is where we are. This is where we live. But hallelujah, in this great darkness, he sent the light. He sent Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, and we're so grateful this day. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this. Such a loving, loving 
loving, loving Father that paid the price that sent our Lord and Savior and that Jesus came and He honored the Father. He showed us the Father and He says to us, follow me, follow my footsteps. Get rid of this old nature. Satan, you had as your father with his nature and his sins. Get rid of it. Put the cross through it and come to the true father. Hallelujah. Come to the good father because Satan is a father and he's a murderer and a liar. But let me introduce you to the father, to the heavenly father, which is truth and is glorious. And hallelujah. They're full of love and he cannot lie and he wants to protect and he wants to provide and he wants to save this planet hallelujah he wants to pull us out of this darkness out of this dustbin out of this filth he wants to save us from this dark deep pits hallelujah oh father how we appreciate you you are our shield our buckler oh my lord hallelujah oh my god oh my father you've been a good good father hallelujah and jesus came and introduced us to the father and he says look at me the way i am that is the way the father is he's humbly humble he's pure hallelujah his truth his life is the way hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, and his love. Darelike said does not agree with sin. His love is to go against sin and Satan and the world and the worldly system and darkness and filth. Because his light and his glory. Hallelujah. His very core, his very nature, his very center is life itself. Hallelujah. Is life and light itself. Hallelujah. And he came and he he showed us to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And as we receive our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. He fills us with his very personal self. His Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father. How glorious is this to understand. Not only do you give the Son the blood of the Lamb. The offer. The Lamb that was slain. The perfect Lamb. Not only did you give us the offer for cleanse to deliver us and cleanse us and purify us hallelujah but then you give us your very breath your very life your very nature your very attitude your very mind hallelujah to flow through us your very blood your very life your very light to flow through us to lift us up that we can communicate because only if we spirit we receive your spirit we can communicate with the father of the spirit and the light hallelujah and in this day oh god we call upon your life we call upon the father to hear us and to answer us oh god that you will send out your word oh father to deliver people on this planet in this time and hour lord as we've got a small window of opportunity to preach the gospel to pray lord I was thinking and meditating today with the Father, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Oh God, we cannot go yet. The work is not done yet. Oh Lord, Lord, please help us and empower us, Heavenly Father, with your spirit, with your power, with your son, with your blood, with your word. Lord, anoint us, baptize us with your precious spirit. That we can run, that we can spread this love and this fire. Fire, oh God, to snatch people out of hell, out of darkness. Empower your people, anoint your people, fill your people with your spirit, with your power. To go and snatch them out of darkness. Lord, that your kingdom come. Like Jesus taught us to pray. Father, hallelujah, come to the Father in the name of Jesus. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And that is our prayer as pray for the world around the world, Lord. There is people that's lost, that's so dark, in such dark pits, and in such, possessed by such darkness. We ask that you will send out your light, that you will use our voices, Lord, that you will use our prayers to send out, hallelujah, your prayers power and your light and your spirit and your glory to drive out all darkness in the powerful and the glorious name of Jesus Lord and the people
people, empower them to seek you, to knock, hallelujah, to ask, hallelujah, and to know, to know that they know that they know that he's a good father and he will answer. Lord, I come against every fear and I cast it out in Jesus' name. It's fear because the eyes are not upon the Lord, the eyes are not upon the Father, but the eyes are upon the world, the eyes are upon the murderer, the eyes are upon Satan. That's a liar and a murderer. And then they compare him with a heavenly pure Father. And Satan comes and he does things to discredit the Father. But in this time and hour, in this day, I pray that you will anoint a people, Lord, to bring down this lie of Satan and to point him out and show him out as a murderer and a liar. Lord, empower and anoint your people in this time and hour. They can start, Lord, to ask and seek and knock and seek you seek your kingdom and not be so caught up in the things around them and not be so caught up in blessings and in and in themselves and in their hurts and their pain no but to come to the father and say father you are a good father here it is i am take it all hallelujah and accept me as your child you know who i am accept me as your child hallelujah and empower me with your nature with your power with your holiness Hallelujah, Allah relikas, anoint us with your fire, hallelujah, to serve you with fire and to save people out of the fire, out of the pit of hell, but save them with the glorious fire of the Lord God, the fire of love with his glory, hallelujah, baptize us with your fire, baptize your people with fire, that's what we ask in this night, that's what we ask. In this night time over this earth, Lord, to baptize your people with fire, 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 fire in Jesus' name. To deliver people, Lord, that's in bondages and people that suffer in Jesus' name. When we thank you, we praise you and we honor you for this day. Heavenly Father, reveal yourself. Jesus, reveal yourself, Holy Spirit. Show them the Father, please. Show them Jesus. Show them who you are. And I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, precious saints, for this time that we spend together. Stay in prayer. Seek the Lord. Knock. Ask. Ask. Talk to him and know that he hears and he answers. He's waiting. The Father is waiting. He's 24 hours so aware of you, waiting for you to talk to him. Hallelujah. Bless you, love you. Remember, pray for the world next week, Monday, 9 p.m. South African time. Bless you.